Did you have anything to do with the death of your wife, Corey? I did not. Two minutes. I'm with the CBS affiliate in Quincy, so we've been covering this from day one. I was a journalist in Quincy for 25 years, and I'm now writing a book on the case. Saves the touchdown. Curtis Lovelace was a center on the Quincy High football team. The offensive line, Kurt Lovelace. Went to the University of Illinois and became an All-Big Ten center. Well, we're just underway. I think we all understand the concept of the play more than in the past. He was hired in the uh, Adams County State's Attorney's Office as an assistant state's attorney. She was a beautiful, blonde-haired, blue-eyed woman, thin, perfect face. Essentially what it was, it's you have like the star football player dating the cheerleader. That's what Corey and Curtis were. And then they get married and they have these kids. Everybody thinking he had it all. Do you have good memories of any of the time together? I do. There were good times uh, and bad. I mean, it wasn't uh, a perfect marriage. On Valentine's Day 2006, Curtis Lovelace found his wife, Corey, dead in the bedroom of their home on Kentucky Street in Quincy. What was your reaction? Uh, just utter shock, just not knowing what to do. At what point does it change from being this blissful, you know, storybook relationship to death on Valentine's Day? I think the volatility, you know, sort of built over time. It did escalate to a point where there was a lot of gossip in the community about him. The case was quickly closed. There was no determination for a cause of death. And Curtis went on with his life. That's when the Quincy gossip mill got started going. People wanted to know what happened to her. I was sitting in my newsroom and uh, got the call, and they said, sounds like Curtis Lovelace has been arrested. Curtis Lovelace was arrested this afternoon. And Lovelace is accused of suffocating his former wife, Corey Lovelace, in 2000. We begin tonight with the start of the Curtis Lovelace murder trial. To not only be called a murderer, but to say that I murdered the mother of my children, it's horrible. And this is a prosecution that should have never been brought. There never should have been an indictment. Breaking news here inside the Adams County Courthouse. Judge Hardwick did just now declare a mistrial. It's set for retrial, and we plan to retry it. Here we are again, the beginning of another loveless trial, the retrial. We're a year after the first one. Defendant's first wife, Corey Lovelace, was suffocated. That will be our medical evidence. You know, in the age of supposed fake news, this is a fake case and there are fake witnesses. No evidence of any homicide. Jenny, what do you see as the big difference this time around? Lovelace's second wife, Erica Gomez, as we know, she was banned from this first trial. She is the biggest difference in this case. A lot of people saying that she was the missing puzzle piece to why we're even here to begin with. To come up here and be sworn. May 2012 is the first time that he attacked me. He ripped my shirt and he tried to grab me again and I kept on trying to fight him off. The children were called down to stop me from calling the police. <laughs> they were lies. I told him multiple times that I had nothing to do with Corey's death. So how do you find yourself in this position? It's a good question, and it's a question that we've been asking for the last two and a half years. 